Today, we're going to be talking about living a simple life. Welcome back, weirdos. Uh, I'm Shannon Davis, and I'm going to be talking with you about how to live a Jesus-centered life in a modern-day culture. And today, we're talking about simplicity, which has always seemed very elusive to me uh, it, and kind of like, I don't know, it's just something that I've always felt like it was more of a personality trait than a goal in how to live your life. And maybe some of you feel that way too. I am not a neat and tidy person. I'm not somebody that is super organized, that has everything exactly in its place at all times. My husband would love it if I was more like that, but that unfortunately is not me. Or I should say it's not a strong point. I excel in other ways, but that's not one of them. So. I've always wanted that kind of life. I've always wanted to have like some of the benefits that come with a simple life, but it, it just never seemed very attainable to me. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how to frame that up and how that affects your faith and what you need to be thinking about in this realm so that you can succeed at what God is calling you to do. So I think the first place to start is a reminder of what we've been working on in reframing our life up to this point. So we've talked about, you know, talking and listening and rest. And the last time we talked about focus and how important focus is to our lives. And I think all of those things set us up in life to start honing in on what are the most important things. If we know that certain things are more important than the others, then we can prioritize that and get rid of the things that are just taking attention away from those. It helps us focus, but it also helps us simplify. Uh, for me, an example of this was um, sometime in my 20s. I don't remember when this was. But later 20s, I was living on my own in Indiana. Uh, and so that's way before I got to where I'm at now. But uh, when I was out there, I, I loved crafting. I worked at Hobby Lobby for a while. So I have a little bit of all of the crafts, love learning new things, but I was feeling guilty and overwhelmed by the fact I had all of these crafts and projects I wanted to do, but it never seemed like I had enough time for it. It was all taking up space. It just was very overwhelming. And so there came a moment where I decided, you know what, I'm just going to pick the like top two or three things that really give me enjoyment, things that um, if, if I'm going to spend free time doing it, like these are my natural go-tos and everything else I'm going to get rid of. Uh, and so I honed it down to just a handful of hobbies compared to all the things. Now, I kept some things that if I ever want to pick up knitting again or uh, cross-stitching or some things like that, that I still had the tools, but I wasn't keeping yards and yards of fabric and yarn and all the extras that you need to do a lot of these crafts because it was just taking up space and energy to keep it organized and I had to move with it every time I moved and it was just, it was just too much. And so not only did focus help me in deciding what were the things I really did want to spend my time doing, but it also helped me simplify my life so that I didn't just have stuff laying around that I had to maintain and put energy into when I could be spending it on something that I really enjoyed. So the first step to living a simple life is deciding what are the most important things after you've gone through all the other kind of buckets that we've been talking about. It's why we have that mentality of them flowing into each other. Uh, you need to decide, okay, so what are the most important things to me? What are the things I want to focus on in life? Um, I would say because you're here, God is one of those things you want to focus on. Family, uh, if you're not married, maybe it's a certain group of friends. Maybe you have hobbies or skills you want to do. Uh, maybe it's uh, achieving a certain type of job or career or uh, getting a degree or, or different things like that. But the first step is to figure out like what are the most important things. And in reality, you're probably think you're probably going to wind up with like three to five categories or focuses in your life. Uh, having more than that is probably going to split you and, and you're going to be dealing with the complexity of lots versus the simplicity of having just a few focuses. So I would recommend just writing down like what are the three to five things that are most important in your life? Doesn't mean these are the only things in your life. But they are the things that if you have to give stuff up, you're not giving these things up. You're going to simplify into 
these are the things that come first. And then maybe I can do some of the other secondary things with people from these categories. Or maybe these other things are a couple times a year thing and not an every day or every week thing. But figuring out what the most important things are help you to simplify. I think another thing that you have to ask yourself when you're starting to look at how to simplify your life is the question I feel like every Christian at some point is going to go through. And we'll get a little bit more into this in the coming weeks when we talk about care and share. But it's the question of how much is enough. When we finally get to this point where we realize my things are not my own, God is calling me to consider others and to share with them. We, especially as American Christians, have to figure out, like, how much is enough? Like, do I really need another pair of shoes? Do I really need another shirt? Um, do I need that bigger house? And I don't think it's a one thought and then you're good and you can move on. I think you will constantly be evaluating this as a Christian on how much is enough. And I don't think it's a right or wrong, like, I mean, there probably is rights and wrongs. Like, there is a point where everybody can kind of agree, like, mm, that, that might be too much. But I don't think that it's a matter of, well, the person that only has 10 shirts in their closet is more Christian than the person that has 20 shirts in theirs or 100 shirts in theirs. I don't think it's as simple as just putting a number to it and saying, well, if you have more than this, then you aren't Christian enough. You need to simplify. It's evaluating what is God calling you to do? How are you utilizing the resources he's given you? And are you, in essence, storing up more treasure for yourself that that time, that money, that energy could be utilized better by sharing with others? And so it's really a personal question. You're going to have to dig deep, ask God, and maybe just take some baby steps in different areas. But you do need to ask the question when you're looking at how to simplify your life. How much is enough in my life so that I can move on and, and give graciously to those around me? I think the other piece to that is when we look at Jesus and how he didn't have anything. Like he said, he had... He didn't even have a place to lay his head. He relied 100% on God's provision through the people around him for at the minimum his three years of ministry. Maybe that was going on before then. I don't, we don't know. But uh, at minimum, Jesus completely relied on God to provide through the people around him. And so for me, the question is always when I'm looking at simplifying and what do I need, what I don't need, how do I give up? in different areas of my life. It's, am I wanting something or keeping something uh, because I am worried or fearful about the future? Is it a matter of I'm just not trusting God enough to provide for me when it's time? Um, is, it, is it some uh, deeper hurt that I am trying to mask? Like what is the, what is the need or the desire behind the more that I am wanting. Uh, and I think if you can start addressing that, uh, it becomes easier to simplify in a lot of different areas. So once you've done uh, some assessment on what are the most important things and kind of ask yourself like, okay, how much is enough? I think the next thing to start assessing in your life is your gratitude. So are you being thankful for the things that you do have? Uh, instead of just piling more things on and getting those little dopamine hits from getting new stuff, and getting the new compliment over the, the new outfit or the, the new car or the new whatever. Do you have gratitude for the things you already have? Are you grateful for what is already in your life? And I think adding regular rhythms of gratitude and thankfulness both to God and just for the simple fact that these people are in your choosing to be in your life. Um, it, is, it is possible for people to say, I'm done and walk out, but these people are choosing to be in your life. Are you grateful for the choices that they have made? Are you grateful for the choices God has made? Um, are you grateful for the blessings that they bring into your life? And honing in on what you do have rather than what you don't have is also another step in making it easier to assess what is important, what is needed, and that in turn lets you simplify. And then I think the final question to ask yourself, um, and then we're going to get into like some things that I've actually done that has helped me a little bit in this, but I think the, the final big question to kind of ask yourself is, uh, do these things give value 
or do they take value away from your life? So if it is something that is going to add value to you, to your time, to your relationships, uh, whatever the case may be, then maybe it is something that you want to keep or, or add in. But if it is adding stress, if it is adding anxiety, if it's adding dread or depression or any of those feelings that God is not the one bringing it in, or if it's bringing in all the things that feel like the opposite of the fruit of the spirit, uh, basically, maybe those are things that you shouldn't be adding to your life. Maybe those are things that you're not supposed to have or keep. Um, maybe it's things reminding you of bad moments that you like, you know what, I just I need to clean it out no matter how much I love this thing. It needs to be gone because it's not contributing value to my life. I think Marie Kondo did have it a little right in this category of does it bring you joy? And uh, not just like a happiness joy, which I think is more so what she was going on with, but does it actually contribute to the value of your life and your, your ability to follow God and what he has for you? And I think if this thing or this relationship or this, uh, this activity or whatever it is, if these aren't contributing to value in your life and making you uh, closer to God and a better version of the person he created you to be, then maybe that's something that it's time to say no. Even if it's a good thing, like not all good things need to happen in your life. Not everybody gets to experience all the good in life. Uh, if we try to experience it all, it will probably only bring stress and wind up not being so good. So just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's good for you. And acknowledging that and clearing out things that are just adding stress to your spaces is worth cutting out. So before we kick into uh, some of the more practical stuff, which will we'll also kind of part to that, um, we'll be talking next week as well about some different spaces in your life that you can look at simplifying and, and more how to's with that. But uh, I'm gonna talk through some of the things that kind of were like aha moments for me and okay, I don't need this in my life and help me simplify. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to remind ourselves of some of the things the Bible says about having a simple life. So uh, Matthew 6 says, don't store up treasure here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasure in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. And so it's not saying don't have anything here and only store up treasures in heaven. It's saying specifically treasures. It's saying the things we value the most, not don't have anything here on earth. Obviously, there's some things that we do need, but it's saying don't store up and make the most important things in your life stuff that isn't coming with you to heaven. Make sure you're valuing and storing up the things that will be valuable in heaven, such as relationships and people and things of that nature. Matthew 6 also says, uh, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And it's that reminder of keep your focus and your priorities in the right spot. Uh, focus first and foremost on God. And when you are focused on him, you will be aligned with him in what is most important. And it will be easier for you to say, okay, if this is the, the heart I have and the focus I have, this is the stuff that doesn't matter anymore. And it becomes easier to just simplify. And then Luke 12 says, uh, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. And it's, I think a lot of times we think uh, money specifically with that verse, but you can be greedy about a lot of different things. Uh, greed is more this um, desire to keep and hoard uh, more than it is about any specific one thing that you can do that. I mean, the, uh, the show Hoarders shows us that you can hoard lots of random stuff, sometimes things that aren't even valuable at all. Uh, but there's just this innate desire to keep and have more in a way to make you feel secure. But we know that at the end of it all, it's not about the things that you have and own. It's about the people and the relationships. And so there's plenty more that the Bible has to say about simplicity, but those are some that are commonly said and good to remember that it's it's keeping our eyes focused and 
remembering what is most important in our life that helps us simplify and give up the things that we don't really need. So let's talk a little bit more about how do we actually start simplifying. So like I said, I'm going to talk about some of the things that we're like, okay, this is a step towards being more simple uh, that I took because for everybody, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, some people, like my sister-in-law, has a super tidy home. Like, she's very minimalistic, very simple in her living. And it works for her, and it's fantastic. And I love being at her house. And I wish sometimes my house is like that. But that's not the life I live. And it's not even necessarily my aesthetic. So what works for me and her, like, we can learn a little bit from each other. But at the end of the day, our, our home environments are not going to look the same. So these are recommendations on things you might think about or try. But the important thing is to start going through those first set round of questions and thoughts to figure out like, okay, what are the things that I can start simplifying in? So one of the things uh, that I uh, have for a while tried to start working towards simplification on um, and it actually came, I'm pretty sure, from like a hoarder show or one of those types of shows. Uh, but it was uh, reducing the sentimental items in my home. Uh, so I, I loved collections. I, I collected stuff all the time. I had a music box collection, a pretty expansive mu music box collection at one point. Um, I did uh, the, the pennies from the states and the keychains and the smash pennies and had quarter, quarter and coin collection and all sorts of different collections. I loved collecting things. Uh, but in whatever show it was that I was watching, they said that instead of keeping all these things that are sentimental that you're never actually going to care about, instead, take a picture of it, put that picture in a place of meaning for you, and then move on. Don't keep this object um, in a closet just so that you know it's there, but it's not something you're using. It's not something of value. Um, let somebody else have it or let it let it move on if it's just junk uh, and keep the memory of it. So uh, that's what I've done. I've tried to do with a lot of my things. I've gotten rid of a lot of my music boxes that I had just because it was a, a collection, um, not because of sentimental stuff. Any music boxes that I, as I get older, I'm like, I don't remember why I bought this. That one gets gone to and so it's dwindled down to maybe just six of them I think very few of them anymore um I have a bunch of awards and trophies and things from childhood I just got a shadow box dump it all in there and it hangs on my wall it's not individual ribbons or trophies or anything like that hanging out and it's still something I can go through if I want to but it's not taking up bookshelves of space with all of this stuff uh kids papers I don't keep too many kids' papers. We've had, we've had lots of kids through our home. But uh, for the most part, I try and scan in a few every now and then, and most of them just wind up in the trash. I'm not, I, I keep memory boxes for them kind of thing, but it's all up to them what they want to keep in their box. It's not really me deciding what they keep. So they can go through it. Um, I try and, we try and keep some of it at least, but I also scan stuff in. My ultimate goal is to have a, um, like a Shutterfly book that just has the stuff in it. And we do like one every year or so. And that's that's the memory book. Um, and then when they get older, they can throw the book away if they want. But it's a much simpler way to keep some of those memories and see the growth than trying to keep all of these papers around our house that might get damaged or mice chew on it or all that kind of stuff. And then you're sad that you don't have the memory anymore. So we scan in as much as we possibly can and then create memory books off of it. Uh, but uh, just reducing the sentimental items that I'm keeping just because it reminds me of something and trying to find ways to preserve the memory without having to keep the items. It, it was one of a bit, the big simplifying mind shifts for me. Another thing that I've been working on is simplifying our habits and our schedules and, and all of that. I, I'm kind of bad about routines. Like, there are things that I try and do all the time, but doing it the same time or the same way every day doesn't necessarily happen. Um, and I, I'm still trying to figure out what it is about me that will that will help me a little bit in that way. But until I get to that, there are certain things that I just try and make systematic and easy so that even if it's not a full habit, there's less decisions that have to be made around it.
So one of the things for us is meal planning. Um, I am not a meal prepper. I wish I was one of those people that could get all my stuff together and plan a meal or do three months of meals at once and throw them in the freezer and then I'm done with it and crock pot and all that stuff. That sounds amazing. Sounds great. Um, my schedule is insane and I just have not figured out how to make that a thing. Um, how to, how to set time aside and get it all done with all the other things that we're doing. So instead what I did was we picked, um, we just themed out all our days. I have about four or five meals per theme that I typically have all the ingredients for, or at least one of those meals. I always have those ingredients on hand and they're usually like 30 minute or less meals. Uh, they're all things that my family enjoys. And then we have our pantry items that if we're in a real rush and the kids want ramen, we do ramen or chef or ID or whatever it might be. We have some of those that it's just like, these are standard easy go meals. And so on the days, on most days, I don't have to think ahead and say, oh, what am I having for dinner? I can just look at the couple choices I've already set aside for myself. I know that I have the ingredients if it's a new month where I've restocked all my stuff and I can just either I start it or my husband starts it and we're good to go. I usually have a couple days a week too that if I want to try something new and fun and I have time to go to the store, uh, I can try a new recipe and then Usually from the couple times that we do cook a week, there's plenty of leftovers and that's the rest of our week. Uh, I've also simplified where on Sundays I don't cook. So we have cereal and leftovers on Sunday nights. That That's the option. Whatever you can fix for yourself. I'm not cooking. Dad's not cooking. You can figure it out from there. So those are all ways that it's just taken a lot of decision and planning out of the equation for us so that we have more time to focus on other things that are more that are more important for us. Uh, another area that I've been trying to simplify is my clothing. Um, I like clothes and I'm not I'm not the uh, spend a hundred bucks on a pair of jeans kind of person. I'm the spend five bucks on 20 pairs of jeans kind of person. So I love like it's a challenge. It's like a puzzle or a game for me to be able to go and try and find really good prices on stuff. So that's the kind of person I am. I don't feel like I'm super hoarding on my clothes because I spend a lot less money on them and I wear them until they have holes in them usually, but I probably do have more clothes than I really should. I know people in my life that would agree with that. However, uh, I have tried to start simplifying in a lot of ways. Uh, one of those things is that black I've just decided is my main color. Um, if I have the choice, I buy something in black. Uh, I try not to buy unless it's a crazy good deal. I don't buy more than one, but I do have a good selection of black shirts and black pants and black goes with everything. So it doesn't matter what, uh, what the other piece of clothing that I'm wearing is, it's gonna match. I have lots of black shoes that I preference and black is just one of those colors that you look good in it and nobody questions if it's the same pair of pants or the same shirt or anything like that two days in a row because that is just the majority of what I wear is black and it has simplified my life in a lot of different ways. I don't have to think quite as hard about what does and doesn't match my wardrobe because it all matches. Um, and as I continue to buy items, I make sure that it's stuff that goes with black or is black and it's just an easier way of simplifying and making things work. Another thing I stopped doing was I'll lose the weight clothing. Uh, I, I know, especially for us girls, there are always those things where it's like, it's just a little too snug or it's like, mm, if I just lose a couple pounds, I bet this would fit right. And so I stopped doing that. And I kept reminding myself that there will always be another sale. There will always be another good deal. I don't have to buy this just because it's a good deal, hoping it will propel me to do something that I haven't done to date. Uh, so I stopped doing all of the Oh, it's going to, it's going to fit. I'm going to lose that last 10 pounds. I stopped doing that because it was just making me depressed whenever I would open up my closet and those clothes would be there haunting me, proving that I couldn't do what I said I was going to do. So I stopped spending money on clothing that did not make me feel good about myself in the moment that I was buying it and just kept reminding myself there will always be another good sale. It, this was not going to be the last good deal that I ever found. 
And one of the last things that I started kind of evaluating, um, this is a lot in my pursuit of productivity and that kind of productivity, I feel like kind of crosses the divide of focus and, and simplicity. Um, but as I was trying to figure out how to keep, get my life in order and manage all of the moving buckets, especially as I got further in church world and married and I had kids, um, was how to keep all of my electronic stuff organized. Uh, and I came across the para method, which I might talk about more next week, but basically it's this method of you only need four files in your digital space. Um, it's project areas, resources, and archives. And so everything in your life should fit into one of those categories. Um, and it actually has done pretty good at keeping things a little bit more organized. Um, the other thing that I've partnered with that, and sometimes I'm good about it and sometimes I'm not, is I always file it now. Uh, I never download something. I'm like, oh, I'll file that later or I'll put that where it belongs later. It doesn't happen. It winds up in a file where I need to spend a couple hours sorting through everything because I didn't label it right or I didn't put it in the right spot or whatever. And now I don't know what it is or if I even still need it. So um, when I'm, especially when I'm downloading stuff, but as I'm scanning things in, different stuff like that, it's take the extra one second to put it in the right spot with the right name, with a date preferably, and do that now because it saves way amounts of brain power and time and energy to organize it on the back end. So the pair method is how I organize stuff and then I also commit to just file it right the first time. And that has slowly been helping me. It doesn't save me like 15 years of digital files that I'm still trying to clean up from my past, but the sooner you start organizing, the easier it is to find the things that you actually need when you need them. And then the final thing I will say about all of this is just having mindfulness about what you're using, how you're using it, and what is really the best thing for the life you want to live. What I mean by that is for a long time I bought stuff because it was the cheapest option, but then you have mismatching things or you don't have enough of one thing to finish out what you're doing or things of that nature. It doesn't all mesh together well. Uh, so commitment and mindfulness are two things that I realized um, just helps in the long run. It maybe, I, I feel like you probably wind up, um, unless you're like a super couponer or something like that, I don't know that it saves you tons of money uh, to bounce around from thing to thing. Uh, so we, we've committed to use it. We use Thieves as our primary cleaner. So we have one cleaner that cleans almost every surface in our house. Um, we use the yellow car rags as our main rag. So you grab a yellow rag, doesn't matter where you find it, other than the laundry, obviously. But uh, And we have our three Thieves sprayer that is safe for most surfaces in our house. And we know we can clean just about anything with those two items. We've simplified that we only buy our storage containers from one place, uh, which is Costco. But we only buy our storage containers from that because then if something breaks, we know that the lids that we have or the bases that we have that are missing one or the other will go with it. Like, if something breaks, we know how to keep getting that thing. So, so long as Costco keeps carrying this style of storage container, this is the only place we'll buy it. Um, yeah, might be a little money in the long run, but might save us money in the long run too because everything always matches and everything stacks and organizes as well. And so we just try and keep from uh, the disorganization that comes with lots of different stuff um, I don't have to talk to my husband about where to go to get things or which thing we get because we know this is the one thing that we always get. Um, and it also makes you put a little mindfulness into why are you buying the thing? Is that really the best option? If you're, if you're saying I'm going to commit to this one brand, to this one way of doing stuff, to this one method, it makes you actually say, okay, so which one is the best one for our family and have more mindfulness around the decisions you're making have more mindfulness about the impact you're making. I am not a crazy super eco person, my husband is, but I do care enough about what we're using that um, I don't want to use just any products in our house. I don't want to use just anything, use any plastic containers or anything like that. I wanna make sure that if I'm committing to something that that commitment's not doing more damage to people, to our world, to my house, 
to any of those things. And so just mindfulness and consideration and commitment can go a long way in simplifying your life and removing some decisions that you shouldn't have to make once you've said this is this is the decision forever until we can no longer make that decision and then we'll make a new one. Uh, but those are kind of all the ways that I've sort of started stepping into simplicity in my life. Uh, maybe those will give you some ideas on ways and areas that you can start thinking of. And next next week on YouTube, um, not the podcast, but uh, next week on YouTube, uh, there'll be a video talking through some really uh, detailed how-tos uh, in simplifying your life and things that you can actually action step. Everybody can action step on this. It's not just some people, but we all have these areas that we can simplify in. Um, and put it into practice. So thanks for joining me on the podcast. Make sure to hit the like, subscribe, leave a comment wherever you're listening, and I will see you next time, weirdos.